Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you because you're so precious to us. Thank you, Lord, um, that you always, you always are there for us and that we can come to you uh, regardless of where we are <laughs> in our walk. We can come to you in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, also, I, I just come against the spirit of fear and the trepidation right now in the name of Jesus. I release the spirit of liberty in this place in Jesus name. <clears throat> okay, so. This morning, my message can be, if it has a title, it is, Where Are You? So while everyone was getting up, giving the wonderful words, fee, just the exhortations, I'm like, I don't even need to speak. I could tell Dad it was all done. See how the Lord loves me? I don't even need to say anything because everything lined up to what the Lord has given me. <laughs> so the Lord is speaking to this house without a shadow of a doubt. So don't, don't disregard it as, you know, many of because it, it's big. Um, go to Genesis 3 and 9. <clears throat> we know this is in the beginning. This is after the greatest fall ever. <laughs> Eve, why did you do that? Because we wouldn't have to go through so bad. Uh, but anyway, um, but this is after the greatest fall with Adam and Eve. And then we see where God comes in and he says, well, he's there already, because remember, God is everywhere. So he says, it, the scripture says, but the Lord called to the man, where are you? Where are you? Um, God's question to Adam was not about his physical location. It was about his spiritual location. And so this morning, I just want to compel everyone to ask, where are you? Now, if you could not hear the Spirit speaking to you this morning, for some odd reason, through all the words, through the worship, um, I'm praying and I've prayed that as I teach this, that the Lord would begin to reveal to you truthfully where you are. <clears throat> uh, in Psalms 139, David says, you have searched me, you know all about me. You know where I am. You know, you know about me. You, you, you know, you know, when I rise, you know, when I lie down, you perceive my thoughts. So he knows when God asked that question, it's not about him finding out your answer. It's about you answering the question to yourself. And I believe as in prayer, um, just to want to give a shout out to, uh, Rachel. Um, many of you don't know, and I really don't even like putting this out here, but I will so that you guys can stay in prayer for us. But Rachel and I come in at 7 o'clock in the morning on Sundays, and we intercede. And sometimes it looks crazy, and sometimes it gets messy, but we intercede on the behalf of everyone for this house, this house, and the things that God is saying in this season. So we do, and I want to thank God for uh, Rachel with babies committing to that every Sunday morning at seven o'clock. So thank you, Rachel. <laughs> While in prayer, I believe the Lord gave me, I cannot stand, stand and still, but anyway, <laughs> I will do that, stand still. <laughs> um, the Lord gave me that there are two groups of people in here and they are on two different spiritual planes but the enemy means for evil he means for your for evil for you the first spiritual plane is people are on a plane where they keep fumbling the ball <laughs> and I was like Lord why fumble the ball it's like athletic stuff I'm not into athletics so whatever but the Lord gave it to me okay Okay, on the first plane, it's like this. When a football player um, is given a ball, such as a receiver, that's a big task. He's given a ball. He receives the ball, so he needs to make it to the next place or either throw the ball to the next person or whatever. I don't know a lot about football, a little bit, okay? But the thing is, once he receives the ball, he keeps fumbling the ball. And if a receiver gets a reputation for fumbling the ball for a season or majority of that season, that reputation begins to kind of try to uh, shape his identity. And I believe that a lot of people in here have been fumbling the ball this season. 
And I just want to, I just want to admonish you. <laughs> There's purpose in your life. See, the enemy doesn't really mess with people that doesn't have purpose. So if you never had a problem, you're probably like a newborn, six months old, something like that. But when there's purpose in your life, the enemy will come after you. And a lot of times you won't recognize it because you won't be honest to say, I'm here. This is where I am spiritually. But instead, you give in to where you are spiritually. But I tell you this, the Lord is a redeemer. The Lord is a redeemer. So the first thing is fumbling the ball. Those who fumble the ball, they've been fumbling the ball in this season. The other thing about fumbling the ball, the enemy will try to use shame and guilt to keep you from coming out of fumbling so much. But I'll tell you this, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation to those. <laughs> tell me the rest of the scripture, Pat, because you're the walking... <laughs> you heard her? So there's no condemnation. So let me tell you this. If you have been fumbling the ball, it doesn't mean you got to keep fumbling the ball because it is not your identity. And the Lord told me to tell you, come through. You will come through this, come through. You have intercessors who are interceding on your behalf. You have a team and a cloud of witnesses that are cheering you on to come through. So you don't have to keep fumbling the ball. Okay. That's, 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 the, that's, that's part of it, okay? So if you go to Mark, the second chapter, okay? And uh, I don't know if it's on the board, but if it's not, that's fine. Okay, um, it says, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and John, James and John. He led them up to a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant and intensely white. And as no one on earth could bleach them. <laughs> wow. That's for all you bleachers. I'm afraid of bleach, so I don't want it messing up my clothes. But nevertheless. Um, <laughs> but that had to be awesome to see. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was excited. The things that he's written about, the things that he, the, the, the two prophets, the prophet that he, you know, was taught about since he was an infant. I get to see them in person. Oh, my God, this is exciting. Okay? So then the word, go back to the word, okay? It says, then a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus, only. Peter was the only one that the word tells us that spoke. Peter <laughs> fumbled the ball. Jesus invited, he had the other disciples, but he invited those three to come up the hill. They came up the hill with him. But where they were up on the hill, Peter didn't recognize <laughs> where he was spiritually. His eyes saw something that was exciting. His eyes saw something that was like, oh my God, this is miraculous. So the excitement overshadowed the thing that God was trying to get to him, the transformation, the tran Jesus was transfigured right before their very eyes. But not only was he transfigured, the Lord was showing them those three with the vision of the prophet and the law, Old Testament, this is my son. They're handing it off to him. New Testament, the old is out, the new is in. But the only thing they can focus on is we see the old. Oh, my God, the old. But they didn't recognize they had the Redeemer right before them, the one who was to come and fulfill the complete law of the law and the prophets. And so they did, could not recognize that because Peter didn't know where he was. He was on the mountain. Some of us come to church. We come to church every Sunday. But we still fumble the ball because we don't recognize where we are spiritually. And I want to admonish you, and I know it may be a scary thing to ask the Lord, because some of us, we have, you know, 
walls and issues, and we don't like to know all of things. And, and I understand that, because I don't like to know all of things sometimes, too. Um, but the Lord is saying, where are you? And wherever you are, come through. Come through. Okay? So that's for those that are f have been fumbling the ball. When you leave here, you won't fumble the ball anymore. When you leave here today, you will not fumble the ball anymore because you are the righteousness of God. You have been redeemed. You have been bought with a price. You will not fumble the ball anymore because you have a purpose and you have a destiny and you're going to come through. You're going to come through. I'm saying this to myself too. No, I'm saying this to myself as well, just to let you know. <laughs> The second group of people that are on a spiritual plane um, are people who feel like they are in the middle. You're in the middle. You're in the middle of a thing. You're not at the beginning. You don't feel like you're at the end, even though some things have ended, but you feel like you're in the middle. And being stuck in the middle can be very uncomfortable. Um, and I want you to know that the Lord told me to uh, encourage you. Even though you're in the middle, the Lord is transforming you. He wants to transform the way you see things, the way your perception is of things. We must, as Fee said, we must come higher. I think that was Fee that said it. We must come higher. We must see things from our perspective. Perspective must be a higher kingdomly perspective. We cannot get lost and dove in the day to day of this world. It will only distract us. Other thing is, people feel like they're in the middle because you may have prayed for things, you may have had, you know, great desires in your heart, and some of the things didn't materialize the way you had planned. That can be disappointing. Some of the things you pray for may not have come to pass yet, and it could be a, you know, a, a great length of time that has happened, and that could be disappointing. But let me tell you this. When you're in the middle, do not become dull. Do not become dull. If you become dull, it changes who you are. You won't get the benefit of being transformed in being in the middle. You won't get the benefit of knowing I still have a purpose. There are assignments that God gives us, right? Our assignment don't necessarily stay the same all the time. But some of us, we like consistency, like my husband. He doesn't like change all that much. Um, but once things change, he adapts really well. It's just like, see, you Last time you adapt, the last 22,000 times you adapted. So what's a big thing? Well, as I get older, I find that I don't like change as much. So now I kind of see from his perspective like, ugh, ugh, you know? So, but I want to tell you this. Just because there's a lot of, oh, yeah, the other thing is transitioning is happening. It's not going to stop. The world as we know it, this world as we know it, is as long until Jesus is here. As long until he's here, we're going to keep seeing transition. We're going to constantly stay in transition. It's not going back to something and just getting comfortable with that. So you need to brace yourselves, prepare yourselves, and let the Lord transform, transform you. And if you feel like you're in the middle of a thing, come through. Come through. You have no other choice. You can't go back. If a woman is in labor and she is in the midpoint, she's been in labor for hours, and she's in the midpoint. She can't turn around and say, I changed my mind. I don't want to have a baby. <laughs> if she tries to go back, her and the baby will die. If she tries to push ahead too quickly, me, she'll split her cervix and could possibly die. So if you're in the middle, find contentment, but do not stop living out your assignment. Do not stop living out your purpose because you have been called for a purpose. See, we're the body. And if you ever go through the word, which a lot of people in here do, some people don't. I don't understand how you live without going through the word. Uh, but that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and a lot of times, a lot of stuff of what I'm saying, you would know if you actually went through the word. Now, 
I'm not trying to be facetious, but it's the truth. But in the word, if you go through the word, especially if you go through Corinthians, Ephesians, it tells you about our position as the body, our position at Christ's body. He is the head, we're the body. We're many members. We have many different assignments, many different giftings, but they all work together by the Holy Spirit. So when you are not where you should be, then a part of the body is out of joint. A part of the body is limp. A part of the body is not helping carry its load <laughs> for the rest of the body. So it's not just about you. That's why it's where are you? Wherever you are, come through. Now, I'll tell you, this has been a challenging season for me. I will tell you that. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't think I want to speak. <laughs> Uh, because it seemed like if I do something my else, another challenge might happen, whatever, whatever. I was like, yeah, that's usually what happened with me, but, you know, it is what it is. So I just try to come through. And thank God for the body of Christ. Thank God for this community who cares, who prays for you, who encourage one another. You won't find too many more communities like this. So if you're a part and God called you to this community, thank God. Thank God. Thank God, because even some of you guys may have never, never, never had someone to approach you. You don't know that person is probably still praying for you. They may say, Lord, bless the lady with the blonde hair and the blue jean jacket on, the one that comes every Sunday, and they may pray for you and your family. So I'm telling you, you are blessed to be a part. You're blessed to be a part of his body. But when you are where you're supposed to be, there's a blessing that is, is, is amazing that goes with it, okay? Um, so I want to the, to, so I wanna go to this scripture, okay? <laughs> About the people in the middle. John 18 and 10. And I'll set it up really quick. Um, this is right when the soldiers come to the garden to apprehend Jesus after Judas has, there he is over there, the snake, you know, he, there he is right there. Okay, whatever. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so the word tells us, then Simon Peter, because he was kind of like Simon still a little bit, and he was Peter too, a little bit. So, <laughs> and sometimes we can get like that, right? <laughs> when we're in the middle, because we can question like, what is our purpose? What is our destiny? So we can have all these emotions that are unchecked. And a lot of times the emotions can dictate our actions, which can't keep happening because God wants us to mature and be an example. And we must be different in the world. Okay, so it says, Simon Peter, <laughs> uh, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup of the f that the Father has given me? When we are in the middle, when things don't look like we think they should, like our mind, our mind tells us, it should look like this. This is how this will happen. This person will be here 100 years. They will never die. This should happen. Oh, God, this is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. How could this ever dissipate? It can cause fear. It can cause anger. And definitely it can cause anxiety, which are none of those things are of the Lord, by the way, okay? I'm going to give you an example. So this week, Tuesday, um, my family, they, okay, for you guys that don't know me, this is my husband, and we have seven grandchildren. So um, we have seven children, and, yeah, seven, seven, right? Yeah, that's, whatever. But anyway, it's a lot of people. That's all I know. Uh -huh. um, so we have seven grandchildren. And our children do this like FaceTime sibling thing, and then they call us sometimes. I don't, I'm not a big FaceTime person because I'm an introvert, so it's like, can you hear me from over here? Like, just pick up the phone, say what I say, text you, whatever. I, I'm not a big FaceTime person, okay? But anyway, they were on FaceTime, and I think I was maybe in class, because I, I, I have class on Tuesday, Tuesday, was it Monday? It's Tuesday. Whatever. I think I was in class, but I could hear the conversation. Now, this one right here, he's an extrovert, so he enjoys the FaceTime whatever he wants. He loves to stay in the know the whole nine yards. Me, I'm like, eh, eh, 
you know, hey, everybody, love you. Yeah, I'm busy, as usual. It's a lot of things to be done. I don't understand why you guys aren't busy. But that's just, <laughs> that's just how I look at it, okay? So anyway, I'm busy. He's on the FaceTime, and I, and I don't usually pay attention. <laughs> but I'm busy doing whatever it is I'm doing. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear, um, <laughs> Ma, because that's what the kids call me, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> and they said this particular grandchild of mine, which I won't name him, um, <laughs> they said, Ma, this grandchild was attacked by two kids on his first day of school. So whatever I was doing, that's why I can't remember. Because immediately I went into, <laughs> I'm just telling on myself, I went into shock. Then I went into action. Then I went into anger. I think I probably started off after the shock, then anger. But we're going to say for the sake of putting everything in order. I went into shock. <laughs> then I went into action. Then while I was in action, I went into anger. And then I... <laughs> so what I did was, I was like, what? What? So everyone in the screen became just like it was no screen to me. And I was like, they did what? So immediately I grabbed my phone and I started looking for a flight. I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 oh no. In my mind at that time, I was like, I don't care if they're kids, I don't care, I'm gonna fight them, I'm gonna fight their parents, I'm gonna fight the whole block. I am going to go and do damage. So I'm looking, I'm looking. I was like, hey, I got a flight for Tuesday. I'm coming Tuesday. I was like, so-and-so, this grandchild, which I won't say the name, baby, I will be there. I will be there. Don't worry about it. But until then, m shouldn't have told him this, right? Arm yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, if you're in class, only thing there is a book. Take it, make sure somebody's unconscious. I will be there. When I get there, you tell them that I'm coming. No sooner than I had told this kid this on the FaceTime with all my other kids and that kid's parents, and I'm like looking at them like, ooh, you. You guys are so wussies. Oh, oh, I was just like, you're not saying what I want to hear. You're not saying you're going to do anything. Oh, well, you know. Oh, I was just like enraged. I was enraged. And so I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. If I could just push them out the way, take them, because they don't know what they're doing. The whole nine yards, I'm in this rage. I go to the bathroom. I stand in the bathroom, and I'm like, the Holy Spirit was like, now you know. You shouldn't have said any of that. You're not bringing peace. You're bringing hell and damnation. You're bringing, you're bringing destruction. You're, you're not, you're not, you're not where you should be. And I repented to the Lord. I didn't repent to my kids because I'm like, you guys don't know what you're doing. That's, <laughs> but I repented to the Lord. No, just kidding. I repented to the Lord and I felt immediately, I did, I felt shame because I did this and my kids usually don't see me go, I don't usually go that far knowing that it's ridiculous. I'm usually gonna think something out before I act. And I was like, I felt guilt and shame. And I felt that is what the enemy is trying to bring to those who are in the middle as well. Just like those who have fumbled the ball. I feel like the Lord is trying to bring guilt and shame because you feel I should be further along than I am. I feel stuck, but I don't know what to do about it. I feel stagnant, but I don't know how to become unstagnant. The Lord wants me to tell you, come through. Come through. Come through. He has need of you. Come through. He has done it all for you. Come through. So quickly, after I repented and the, the guilt and shame, because I know what guilt and shame feels like, 
I broke it off of me immediately. And then I was like, Lord, but could you help me with my thoughts? Because if I don't hear that something has hand, got handled with this, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go to that place. He's like, in prayer. Go in prayer. So I begin to pray about the situation. And he's like, how many years have you prayed for your children and your grandchildren? How many years have you played the blood over them? And I was like, Lord, thank you. I remember. I remember. I remember what I prayed. I remember what you've told me. I remember the destiny and the purposes and the words that have been spoken over my children and their children's lives. Lord, I remember. So I did have to shizak myself, and I began to praise him. <clears throat> Come through. Come through, Life Church. Come through. And for you guys that are not in either one of those places, I'm sorry, but I'm sure you know someone who might be in one of those places, so go and tell them. Come through through okay <laughs> when we examine ourselves we don't examine ourselves uh to feel shame we examine ourselves so that we make place for the holy spirit to reveal to us because remember the kingdom of god is always what expanding it's advancing it's expanding so in order for us to get the revelation and understanding of really about the kingdom we need to grow now, however much word you have, those are the seeds that you're going to see of revelation. If you expand your capacity for more word, then more revelation will be given to you. And some of the assignments that are given to you, they are weighty. They are weighty. So if you don't expand your capacity for more revelation, more revelation in the word, if you don't expand your capacity for more intentional prayer, being led by the spirit, then you will fumble the ball. But God is gracious and his grace will help you come through till you get to that place. Now, I know people naturally, some people like, information. Some people like to read. Some people like both. Some people can spend hours reading. And some people like can spend hours delving into information. So it's no problem for those people. But for people who don't really like information, then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to read the Bible, how to read his word in, in, in increments where it's fitting for you. But push yourself further and further because if you expand your capacity, he's going to trust you with more. We're all stewards down here. We're, whatever we have, we're stewards. And God has given us to be stewards over it. But if we come through, if we come through, the reward is so much greater than you could ever imagine. So as a worship team, come back up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, as a worship team, come back up. And I pray that your hearts be open to receive this because what Mama Fee said and the other words that came, it's a warning. Whenever the Lord releases a sound, it's usually for a warning. Whenever there's a sound, a clarion call, sounds like a trumpet, that's a warning. Take note. Don't fumble anymore. Don't feel like because you're in the middle I can't be who God called me to be. I don't see his goodness in me anymore. I feel like I'm just here day after day, living these days aimlessly. That's not true. You have been called to reign in heavenly places with him. You are seated in heavenly places with him. You are more than an overcomer. And every time, every time the enemy would try to speak to you and tell you otherwise, you tell him, nope, I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Remember, God said, tell, he told in Genesis, and also Jesus said it as well. I can't remember which scripture, but God said, tell them the I am has sent you. You don't need to explain anything else. So when the enemy speaks to you, you tell him that the I am said, I am more than a conqueror. The I am said... I'm coming through. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I look like today. It does, does not define my identity in Christ. Come through, Life Church. Come through. For those who feel like they fit in these categories, 
I'm going to turn it over to uh, B and Andrew. But I also told B and Andrew, I felt it's really important today for the elders, the leaders, to come up and pray with whoever come up. Because I'm telling you, we're not leaving here until you come through. You're going to leave here a changed person. You're going to leave here recognizing, I'm not going to fumble the opportunities that God gave me. I will. I will steward this. I am. I was born for purpose. Look at Peter. He was born to be the rock. But he kept fumbling the ball. He was born to be the rock. But he kept fumbling the ball. You were born for purpose. You weren't born just for any old thing. You were born for purpose. You are part of a kingdom. And there is great confidence in serving a king who has redeemed you. There is great confidence in serving a king who has called you holy. There's great confidence in serving a king who wants you to come through, come through, come through, Life Church, come through, come through. If you don't remember anything else this morning, remember this. The eyes of the Lord is everywhere. But his love for you doesn't make his eyes look at you any less than who he called you to be. He sees you as the perfect finished product. And because of that, you can trust him. And if he says it, bank on it. It's going to happen. And he that started a work in you, he's going to finish that work. Don't let distractions, don't let fear, don't let the lies of the enemy keep you going in these circles, in these cyclic patterns. Don't let it cause you to be stuck and feel like I can't move out of this. Yes, you can. Come through. Come through. Come through. We're going to come through together. <laughs> We're going to come through this together. I'm the type of person I want everybody to go. I, I don't want to just go to the high place my own self. I want everybody to go. Come through. Dig it up, shiki, I believe that we're in a time where God is addressing double-mindedness. He's addressing places where we compromise. Recently, we just lost somebody really important to us. And it was so sudden and it was so unexpected. And it rocked us. But it did not move us. Because there were places where we watched other people around us question the goodness of God. But we know that he is still good. We know that he is still good. And we looked to the people around us who are our tribe to comfort us, to encourage us, to stand with us. And so this morning, I just, if there's anything stirring inside of you about that, we would love to pray for you. And I have some specific words of knowledge that I'd love to share. Sir in the glasses with the white t-shirt. Jose, is that your name? Um, I just The Lord kept highlighting you to me. And I felt like he said that there is something that you are carrying that is very weighty, but it's not too heavy for you. That he has created you to carry it. And there's going to be a place where that is going to impact the people around you greatly, especially in your family. And I even just feel like there's a place where um, maybe there's has been questions about uh, well, what is my legacy? What is it that I get to leave behind? And I feel like the Lord is saying that I am placing something on you that is weighty and I'm going to carry you through and I'm going to take you on a journey with me. And it's going to be a beautiful adventure where I will show you exactly how to release what you carry. Amen. Sir in the African shirt. What is your name, sir? Stephen. The Lord kept highlighting you to me too. And I didn't know what he was going to say until I got up here. 
but I kept feeling that I kept hearing the word culture, that there is something that you um, are taking into areas where the culture is so incredibly different. And the Lord is saying that I am planting inside of you the place to shift culture around you very significantly. And I also heard him say, I, I heard him, I heard the word father. That there is a place where you are carrying um, just the, the beauty of fatherhood with you and that you're going to release that in amazing ways to the men around you. Even men that are so lost and so incredibly vulnerable that you are going to empower them to rise up and be fathers over their children. I had a word for Yalen. Where's Yalen? Oh. <laughs> Yalen, I saw this beautiful picture of you. I saw that you had a shovel. And you were going to these places where you were trying to dig up weeds so that you could plant a garden. And I heard the Lord say that I have prepared a place for you already where you do not have to go and slave away and work hard and labor just to plant something that you feel will grow in a place where there's weeds. He's saying that I have a garden for you. I have a field for you. And all you need to do is come and grow what I have already given you. Amen. Amen. I had one more word for the, late, the girl right in the back. Yes. What is your name? Mika Michaela. Yes. Yes. Is that Michaela? Shayla. Shayla. Okay. Shayla, I saw a picture of a daisy. And I kept hearing the Lord say, Come towards the sun. Come towards the sun. I feel like there's places where he's already planted that inside of you, but I think that there's places where he's wanting you to know how to hear his voice and to know when to turn to him in the places where you don't know where to go and what to do. That you release so much joy around you, but there's places where you're looking and lacking for joy. And he's saying, come towards the sun. Amen. We had a baby swap out. <laughs> it's funny, I had um, I actually had words for two of the same people. We didn't plan on doing that, and you're not we're not having favoritism here. <laughs> um, but you, uh, Jose, is that your name? Um, uh, the word that I got for you is I saw I saw a picture of a motorcycle. And, and I saw its tires, and its tires were bald, almost, almost smooth. And like it, it was move, the tires were moving, but the dirt underneath of it wouldn't even, even catch because it was just so smooth. And then I saw those tires, they begin to, to grow, and they became robust. And the tread on them just, just, just was significant. And it was very, very deep. And the dirt just immediately began to grab, and, the, and it started to move forward. And I felt that that was really important because I feel that like the places where you felt stuck in patterns and in cycles, God is growing you in a robust way to move forward. And I felt the scripture that was with that was uh, Hebrews 6.1. It says, therefore, let us move beyond the ele elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward into maturity. I just believe that there's a maturity over you. And so I would love to pray for you if you if you had a chance after the service. Hey Judy, <laughs> I have a word for you. And I and I felt that it was regarding disappointment. And I feel that the Holy Spirit was saying that He is beginning to restore places of disappointment in your life. And I've specifically heard him say, I'm restoring disappointment through praise. And the verse that I got with it was Isaiah, and it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. 
And there was just this place that there's things, I think, that just don't make sense. And I feel like God is saying, it's okay. Praise me in the midst of it. Because I'm going to show you. And I'm going to restore the things that feel like a disappointment. Because you have acted in obedience to praise. Does that make sense? Hey, Crystal. I got a word for you, too. I feel the Lord saying that you are seen and heard. Is that making sense? And, and I feel like your purpose has been on your mind a lot lately. And or just purpose in general. And, and I felt the Lord saying that not only is he wanting to reveal more purpose to you, but he wants to reveal the specific way in which you are going to instill and develop purpose in your sons. And that there was just, the, in any of the places where it can be tiring taking care of kids, I get it. I just had a baby swap off. Um, <laughs> That, that God wants to just bring so much fulfillment and so much joy in the purposes that you have and the role that you have and the weight that you carry in this role in this season. Does that make sense? I'm going to do one more. This is the same gentleman as my, my wife prophesied to as well. Um, you said your name is Steve? Is that correct? Stephen? Stephen, I was immediately drawn to your 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 shirt, and 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 I, I just I was like, God, is this you or is this just me connecting things? <laughs> but I saw um, immediately when I saw you, I just kept on thinking of this gentleman that I know in Zimbabwe, Africa. His last name is um, Kulea. He's a pastor. His name's Pastor Luke, Luke, Kulea, and and his name, his first name is Success, and he legally changed that. Because his birth, his given birth name was failure. So when he got saved and he came to know the Lord and, and God started just giving the calling on his life, he legally changed his name from failure to success. And I just, I just immediately thought, uh, uh, thought that when I saw you. And he, I just feel the Lord saying that any of the places, I'm not saying that you are a failure, but any of the places where there has, failure has been spoken over you, where, where things haven't gone certain ways that you thought, and you might have carried that identity, I feel like God is changing that for you. And he's saying that that is a lie, that is not the truth of your identity, and he is blessing you and declaring success over you. Does that make sense? So I'm going to call the prayer ministry ministry team forward, and um, even the senior leaders. If you guys, I think we're going to need a le decent amount. But if you um, received a word today, we would love to lay our hands on you and pray for you. If something that Talia said just sparked something in you, and it's twisting and it's turning, and Holy Spirit is moving, we want to pray for you because when we pray, things happen. Amen. So. We're going to uh, transition to that. The worship team is going to play for a little bit, but we want you to come up. So senior leaders, come on up right now. Prayer team, come on up right now. We're going to conclude our service, but if you guys, if you need to catch up or chat with people, um, please do so. But if you deeply want prayer, come get it. We want to pray for you. So that's going to conclude the service for today. Be blessed. Have an amazing week. But again, don't miss an opportunity to get prayer.